Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at scenarios with Excel. This is an absolute must have for your Excel toolbox if you're going to be doing any kind of forecasting at all, all right? If your job involves planning for the future, then scenarios are here to help you, all right? Say for example, you are doing manufacturing, you're doing finance, you're doing marketing, any of those will benefit, will benefit from knowing how to use the scenario tool. Now, guys, scenarios, we're going to be looking at them from two different perspectives. The first one is the actual scenario tool that Excel offers. Now that is going to be like the vanilla version of that. And then we're going to look at how to replace that tool using data validation and formulas, all right? Now, both have their ups and downs. It's up to you to decide which one is best for your job and uh, everyday life. Let's get started. All right, guys, let's get started with scenarios with Excel. All right. Now, guys, for this example, we're going to be working with a three year forecast that we're going to be uh, we're, we're going to try to figure out how our company is going to do based on the worst case, base case and best case scenario. All right, guys. Now, for those of you that don't know finance, don't worry. I'm going to walk you through this income statement. It's really simple. And for those of you that do know, do know finance, just bear with me for a little bit while I explain this. All right, guys, it's really simple. We have the total sales, $1.2 million, and the cost of goods sold. That's what this COGS thing stands for. It's cost of goods sold. All right. It's going to be worth $800,000. So the gross profit is going to be four hundred dollars and then we have to subtract from that the administrative expenses and the sale expenses for a grand total of 180,000. Now we're assuming a 30% tax rate. I don't know why I'm multiplying times 0.4 here. We're assuming a 30% tax rate as it is the norm in the USA. And the final profit is going to be $126,000. All right, that's it. Now we're being asked to do a three year forecast by quarter. All right, so we're going to just do straight line growth all the way out based on this scenarios here. All right. Now, guys, how would we go about doing that? Real simple. We're going to use the base case right now for our multiplications. So the base case right now is telling me that the sales are going to grow at a 4% per quarter rate. So let me type in this 4%. All right. So I'm going to write in equals this times one plus this cell right here and make sure to do an absolute reference all right because we're going to be referencing the same cell regardless of where we are so absolute reference close parenthesis and that gives me my total sales now the cost of goods sold it's going to be the exact same operation only that we're going to change the cost of goods sold so i'm going to grab this one multiply it times one plus four percent and close parenthesis all right guys um, no, this was wrong. It's this one and absolute reference again. That's it. All right. Gross profit is going to be equals to the total sales minus the cost of goods sold. And then we have to do the admin expenses, which is going to be this one times one. I'm sorry. This one times one plus this 4% over here. Make sure to do an absolute reference. And I'm just going to copy this over to sale expenses. And the operating profit is a result of gross profit minus the admin expenses minus the sale expenses. All right. Finally, taxes. Those don't grow quarter per quarter, hopefully. And uh, that means we can just grab the operating profit, multiply it times 30%, and then subtract that from our operating profit. All right. There we go. We have our final profit. Now, guys, what we need to do is draw this out in a straight line. And that'll get us everything that we need. All right. Now, with that said and done, I want to do the total. So the total is going to be the result of uh, adding up everything from beginning to end. All right. From the first quarter of 2017 to the last quarter of 2019. Now, this is one way to go about it. Just type in sum and everything else. Now, that's one possibility. Another possibility is you could use the keyboard and press Alt Shift O, Alt Shift uh, Alt Shift Zero. I'm sorry. Alt Shift Zero. And it's going to give you the exact same result. All right. So this is going to be pretty useful for copying and pasting. And uh, well, it messed up the formatting. So let me try it again. Paste just the formulas. There we go. All right, guys. So that's telling me that throughout the whole of these three years, at the end of the three years, I'll have netted $1.8 million in profit. All right. Based 
on a base case scenario where the growth rate, the cost of goods sold and the expenses grow at the exact same rate. Now, however, as you might know, forecasting is never an exact science, it's more of an art, all right? So in this instance, we're not going to be, uh, since we don't have any scientific method to do this, we're just going to be doing worst case and best case scenarios, all right? And that's where the scenario manager in Excel comes in. Now, first thing that I want you to note is that make sure that it's always, always, always formulated, all right? In this instance, our goal, our goal is to know how much profit we're going to net at the end of three years. Make sure it's formulated. If I had just presented you with a finalized uh, income statement, all right, it's feta complete, it's done, and uh, you have the values, then the scenario manager is not going to work. Why? Scenario manager is going to work by modifying this growth rate over here, and everything's going to cascade downstream into this formulas to make sure that, uh, to make sure that you get an accurate number. If this weren't formulas, if, if this were just numbers, then changing this wouldn't have any effect at all on my forecast. All right, guys, without any further ado, let's get started. We're going to head over to a data tab. We're going to head over to a what if analysis and we're going to open our scenario manager. All right, now let me delete this scenarios over here. And this is what you should be seeing. The most important thing that you should have is an add button right here. So I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to tell, okay, scenario name. The scenario name is going to be um, my worst case scenario, all right? And it's going to happen by changing cell E25, which is where I have my growth rate. Now, the comment here is going to be something like, uh, this assumes the sh hits the fan, all right? Let's press OK. And we have to enter the values for each of the changing cells. Now, the values in this, in this instance is going to be 0.02. All right, I'm going to press OK. Uh, notice that I can't reference, all right? No matter how hard I click on the worst case scenario, I just get this really annoying error message. All right, so I'm going to press OK, and there we go. I have my worst case scenario there. I'm going to press Add again, and it's going to let me add another scenario. So I'm going to add my base case scenario. Changing cells E25, yeah, that's fine. And this assumes normalcy, which never ever occurs. I'm going to press OK and I'm going to add 4%. Okay, yeah, that's fine. And now add my best case scenario, changing cell E25, yeah, that's fine. And the comment is going to be, this assumes it's all rainbows and unicorns and bliss. All right, let's press okay. And I'm going to select best case scenario, dot 07. All right, press okay, guys. And there we go. We have worst, base, and best case scenarios. Now, how would I go about seeing the results of this? Well, there's two ways. The first one is, say, for example, I want to see what happens in a worst case scenario. Then I'll just go look for the show button and press on it. And check it out. I start losing money on the last three quarters of my forecast. And, well, I'm going to end up with $537,000 for the whole three years of business operation. Now, in the base case scenario, I click on it, I click on show. And notice it's the same thing that you already knew from, from the original calculation. And then the best case scenario, where with just a 7% growth rate in sales, I get a final profit of $4.2 million. All so, right, so this is a lot, a lot. It's more than double my base case scenario, even though my growth rate is not double my base case scenario. All right, guys. So I can show all three of this as they are. However, if I want to see them, uh, say, for example, in a small report, then go over here to where it says summary and click on it. Now, it's going to ask me, what do I want? Well, I want scenario summary. That's what I just click on. But what are the result cells? Excel is going to try to guess and it's going to do a terrible job at that. All right. Those are not the result cells. The result cells is going to be pretty much Q20. Yeah, Q20. All right. Where I am going to get, where I am going to get uh, my final profit for the entire three years. Press OK on that, and voila, check it out. I'm being told that by changing cell E25 with worst base and best scenarios, then the result cell in Q20, which is my final profit, is going to be 500, 1.8 million, and 4.2 million. All right, guys? Now, one thing that I want you to know, one thing that I want you to know is, um, if I were to change the growth rates here, say, for example, it's now I don't know. The best case scenario just got better. It's 9%. Notice that the scenario summary doesn't 
get altered, all right? I need to go back and change everything in my scenario manager to make it show up here, all right? And it, sh and it would show up in a new worksheet. All right, so there's a little bit of inflexibility there. However, well, there's no advantage to it, all right? Uh, sorry, for, sorry about that. Okay, so that's it for the Excel scenario manager. One last thing that I want you to note is that right now the scenario summary is showing it as the names of the cells, E25 and Q20. If I wanted to fix that, I would need to change the name of the cell, all right? So say I select E25, head on up here and click on it and type in growth rate, all right? Now, the only rule for naming cells in Excel is, um, no spaces, all right? No spaces and that's it. You can name it pretty much anything you want. Um, now, Q20, click on here, head over, head on up and select Q20. It's going to be called, how it's going to be called? Final profit, all right? Remember, no spaces. Now, if I go back to scenario summary, this isn't going to be altered. In fact, I need to create a new scenario summary. So I head over to my scenario manager and click summary and tell it to, that I need a scenario summary for cell Q20. Okay, that's it. And here we go, in scenario summary number two, I have growth rate and final profit, all right? Now, right now you'd be wondering, why the hell did I do that if I already had, I mean, this is pretty easy to read, yeah. But when you're modifying a bunch of cells and you're modifying and you're looking at a bunch of result cells, then yes, you need the names because you're going to be confused at what was modified and what was the result, all right, guys? Okay, now that is done. Let's head over to the next one, with scenarios and with drop-down list. I'm sorry, with scenarios, the one that we've done, now let's do, let's look at the drop down list. For starters, what we need is to make sure that this is um, formulated. I'm not going to bore you with the same formulation. So I'm just going to copy the work that I did from here and press Control C, Control V. All right, guys. Okay. Now, with that said and done, let's get started on the next one. What I'm going to be doing in the next one is um, pretty simple. I'm just going to go over here and type in select scenario, all right? And then I'm going to select G6 and add some borders to it. Check it out, we have borders. And I'm going to create a drop-down list. How do I create a drop-down list? Pretty simply. Head over to data, head over to data validation and click data validation. Now with data validation selected, I'm going to tell it to allow list. And the source is going to be this little part over here. Press OK and check out. I have worst case, best case, and best case. Now, this is going to modify my growth rate, all right? If I have best case selected, I want my growth rate to be the best case, all right? So how would I go about doing that? Well, it's pretty simple. I'm going to leave my fixed growth rate here and I'm going to modify it to use a formula. Now, that formula is going to be an if function. I'm going to type in if, where the logical test is going to be if what is in my dropdown list is equals to the worst case, literally just the cell that says worst case, then please go ahead and bring up the worst case scenario. Now, if false, if what I have selected right here, um, if what I have selected right here, if what I have selected right here is equals to the base case, then bring up the base case scenario. And if not, well, if it's not a female dog, it's a male dog, my mama would just say. In this instance, it's just the base case possibility, all right? There's no other option. Close my parenthesis, and there we go. Best case scenario brings back 7%, worst case scenario brings back 2%, and a bunch of losses, all right? So notice how this is, in my opinion, this is easier and more accurate. Well, not more accurate, but at least easier. And it makes it easier for the presentation as well, all right? So I can select everything from my drop-down list, and I can watch the scenarios there. I cannot create a scenario summary, but I can modify things on the go. What do I mean? If the worst case scenario want to check out what happens with a 1% growth rate, and there we go. It automatically, automatically gets transferred into my growth rates here. And if I want to figure out what happens with a 9% growth rate, then I modify the best case scenario and go ahead and select it up here. And there we go. We have our best case scenario. All right, guys, now technically you already know everything, but I want to show you one last thing, and it is how would I go about doing this with an HLOOKUP, which is also possible. So I delete my formula here in E25 and I type in HLOOKUP, where the lookup value is whatever is in my drop down list. The table array is this one right here. 
the row index number is row number two, zero. Close parenthesis, and you'll notice it works in the exact same manner. All right, guys? Okay, so with that said and done, uh, we already know everything there is to know about scenarios in Excel, and you can go proceed ahead with your life. Remember, guys, if you like the video, make sure that you subscribe, hit like, hit the like button, and leave your comment. I'll see you in the next video. Do you want to be an Excel god? Our online course will turn you into an Excel master in only 90 days. Excel is the most important tool in the office, but almost nobody knows how to use it. Most people dive right into Excel with no formal training and never use the right tools. And thus, they end up delivering mess reports that are full of mistakes and they end up hating their jobs. In reality, Excel is really simple to use and can do your job for you, if you know how to use it. But you have to pick the right place to learn from, or you'll only end up more confused with all of the different tools and functions that Excel has to offer you. So, what can you do? Our Excel course is tailor-made for you. We're going to teach you Excel, all of Excel, using real-life examples. From simple exercises to full-fledged business case studies. Take the online course and you'll be an Excel god in only 90 days. The course consists in more than 45 lessons and 15 case studies, all with their detailed solutions completely recorded in video. And you're going to be able to access them whenever you want, whatever you want. Best of all, you're going to have lifetime access to the course and you're going to get any of the updates that we're constantly putting out for free. Even better, when you get our course, you'll have free access to our full Visual Basic and Macros course and also to our Power BI course, all with just one single purchase. More than 3,000 students have passed through our classrooms. We've attended companies like Kodak, IBM, Samex, HP, Continental, DB Schenker, and more. So, if you want to absolutely master Excel, make sure that you sign up now. You will become an Excel guy. A2 Excel.